Today I'm going to give you my top eight hacks for intermittent fasting. And stick around to the end. I'm going to share Fred's story and how he used intermittent fasting and his regimen that he used to lose 170 pounds and reverse his type 2 diabetes. Just remember, whatever you do when you're fasting, always be safe. That's my number one rule for fasting. You have to learn what to expect when fasting, and you can check out my other video. But if you're not feeling well, and it's something that you can't figure out, then stop and find out, get some help, talk to a doctor. So, for example, if you feel hungry, that's completely to be expected. Even sometimes a bit of headache, a bit of a GI upset or diarrhea, that can be normal. Other people have had the same issue. But if you're feeling very weak, if you can't get out of bed, if you're having severe pains, well, that's not normal. And you shouldn't try to push through because that's how you get uh, really into trouble. You always have to be safe when fasting because there's always going to be another time. You can stop now and figure out what's going on and then do it tomorrow or the next day. You don't have to jump right into a long fast. You can build yourself up slowly. So there's always ways that you can do it in a safer manner, but always be safe. Talk to your doctor, try and find out more information. That's the number one rule bar none. This is especially true if you're doing longer fast than you're used to. Fasting is like a double-edged sword. It has incredible powers to make you better, to make you lose weight, to control your blood sugars, and all those other benefits like autophagy and so on. But on the other hand, it has a lot of power to hurt. Just like a knife, you wouldn't say we should never use knives because it can cut, because it can also heal if you use it like a scalpel. Fasting can be very powerful for good, can also be very powerful in terms of problems. So you have to make sure that you know what you're doing, you're getting the proper medical help, you're talking to your doctor. If you're taking medications, then you should always talk to your doctor to make sure that it's safe to do the fasting. Hacks are tips or shortcuts that you can use to make fasting easier or more effective. And I'm gonna give you my top six hacks that we've used at thefastingmethod.com. Here's number one. Try using natural appetite suppressants during a fast. You know that you're gonna get hungry during fasting, so you have to be prepared for how to deal with it. What we found is that using something like a pinch of salt to water is really effective to suppress those hunger pangs. You can also use something such as pickle juice, which is sugar-free instead. It has also very much the same effect. Or mix a little apple cider vinegar in water. Green tea and mint tea and other herbal teas often do the trick. By the time you finish them, often the hunger starts to subside and then you can get on with the fasting. Hack number two, try gentle movement. When you're fasting, try scheduling a period of time when you would normally eat, say lunchtime, and do some gentle movement such as a walk or for indoors, what's really good is a rebounder. You can just jump up and down and do that for 15 or 20 minutes or go for a walk. As you start to move, or when you're using your rebounder, you're starting to jump up and down, the hunger is naturally going to go away because the blood is going to go into the muscles and you're gonna forget about what you're doing. It'll be even better if you take your mind off of it. For example, when you're doing your rebounder and you're jumping up and down, you can listen to some music or you can watch some TV. If you're going for a walk, you can easily go for a walk with somebody and by the time you talk it over, the hunger will have subsided and that'll get you through. Hack number three, try fat fasting. Fat fasting is a variation where you eat very high fat foods going into a fast. And the idea is to get your body used to using fat as a fuel so that when you go into the fasting, your body is using body fat instead of dietary fat. So for the day before, you might take a lot of bacon and avocados, for example. 
During the fast, you can use a little bit of MCT oil or coconut oil or something like that to get you through those hunger pangs. But that fat can provide a lot of satiety to take the edge off the hunger. Hack number four, take care of your stress levels. When you get stressed, this can be a real deterrent to weight loss and also fasting. Try to schedule during the time you might be eating something like breathing exercises or yoga or meditation. Those are great ways to deal with the stresses of everyday life, but also during that period of time, you're going to take your mind off of your hunger and be able to concentrate on something else. The exercises that you do doesn't really matter, but you just want to make sure it's something that's calming and that you can do it on a regular basis. Hack number five, sleep hack. Sleeping is extremely important. We've seen many times where people are not able to lose weight because they've been sleep deprived. When you're sleep deprived, your stress levels go up, cortisol goes up, and your body tends to respond by holding on to that weight. Some people use sleep aids such as melatonin or magnesium and that can be very effective. Try taking half the dose a little bit earlier around 6 p.m. and then take the rest of it just before bed. Dosing it like this really seems to improve sleep especially during those fasting days when it may be difficult to sleep. I have a bonus hack. Here's hack number six. If you're doing a 24 hour fast, try starting it from lunch to lunch instead of dinner to dinner. When you eat later at night, a lot of those calories are going to be stored as fat because you're not able to use them. When you eat earlier in the day, such as at lunchtime or in the early afternoon, you still have a lot of time for your body to use up those calories. So try moving the fast up during the day and you might find it makes a big difference to your weight loss. Fred is in his mid 50s. He had been morbidly obese for most of his adult life. He tried everything. Mostly he went with the mainstream medical advice to eat less and move more. And unfortunately, like almost everybody else, it didn't work. When he developed type two diabetes, he started to do a little bit of research. And by reading some of the books like the Obesity Code and the Diabetes Code, he recognized that a lot of what he was taught was probably not correct. He started fasting and before he knew it, he had lost 170 pounds. He had gotten rid of his type 2 diabetes as well as his high cholesterol and his sleep apnea. That's great news. What is his best advice? Start slow. Cut out all the sugar and refined carbohydrates because they can really make it difficult to do the fasting. His fasting regimen is three 36 hour fasts per week. So for the entire day, uh, for three days, he will not eat. He'll only eat four days of the week and the other three he's going to fast. And by doing that, he allows his body to use up those stores of body fat and that's what allowed him to get so healthy. Great job, Fred. I wish you all the best. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned something. If you did, maybe share it with a friend. They might learn something too. And maybe you might help them with weight loss or reversing their type 2 diabetes. And if you enjoyed it, make sure you hit that like button and I'll see you next week.